industry. So for example, we have our BIDA pathway, which is our construction trades. Um, so Mr. Axtell teaches the four classes in this pathway and he also has his own construction company. So he's out working in the field and also teaching the classes here at the high school. Um, this kind of some- I, This is Jensen, I apologize for interrupting you. Yeah. Um, I failed to mention one more thing. Students, please use the Q&A section for questions. Do not use the chat. There's a Q&A function and we will be answering your questions throughout the presentation and after the presentation if you have questions. So please use Q&A, do not use the chat and we'll be happy to answer your questions there. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, okay, so some benefits and why might you want to complete a CTE pathway? Um, a few things. All of our classes meet the CSU UC A through G requirements. So they either fulfill your G for college prep electives or your F for a visual and performing arts class. Um, it gives you the opportunity to kind of create and follow a plan that matches maybe your specific college and career goals. And it gives you exposure to current information and experiences um, directly related to some careers you might be interested in. Next slide. These are the specific pathways that we offer here at Braille Linda High School. We have quite the variety. Um, graphic design with Mr. Chicarello. This is our digital design and visual, visual communications classes. We also have cinematic arts um, with Mr. Ming's art of video production and video production one. Ms. Steinmetz has culinary arts. She teaches culinary one and culinary two. We have our patient care pathway with Mr. McCall. He teaches medical careers and then sports medicine and therapy. Our building industry technology academy with Mr. Axtell. So this is four years of BIDA. And then our global information technology academy, which is GITA with Mr. Seleski. So GITA one through four. Um, like I said, we offer quite the variety of pathways. If you wanna learn more and kind of explore, I would recommend that you check out um, our website under career pathways to read a little bit more about the classes within the pathways. All right, next slide. Okay, Wildcats. Um, Right now, before you're starting to select your classes for 10th grade, we wanted to take a moment to quickly review again what those options are after high school. So you all know after receiving a high school diploma, you can go out into the world of work, get a job, start earning money, and pursue that path. Um, the military is always a good option too, so that is another option for students after high school, after receiving your high school diploma. But if you're thinking that college or school is going to be your pathway after high school. We wanted to remind you of the different systems in the California college um, program and kind of what that all means. So you have the community college, the Cal State University system, the University of California system, and the private system. So for community college, you guys are familiar that Fullerton College is our local community college, but other types of community college or other examples of community colleges are Mount Sac, Orange Coast College, Santiago. So if you've ever heard of any of those or you, you are familiar with those, those are community college um, uh, establishments. Um, there's 114 campuses in that system in California. And keep in mind that you don't need a GPA requirement to go to community college. All you need is to show proof that you graduated from high school or you're 18 years old. Um, there's no SAT or ACT requirement. And the best thing about community college right now is it's free. Um, if you're thinking of going to a Cal State, um, some of the schools that are in that system are Cal State Fullerton, which is our local Cal State, Long Beach, San Diego, and Cal Poly Pomona, just to kind of give you an idea of some of our close by local Cal States. Remember the California State University system is one university with 23 different campuses. And in order to apply and be admitted, you have to have at least a 2.5 minimum GPA. So you can definitely um, have a higher GPA, but nothing less than. And depending on the actual campus will depend on what that campus specific or site specific GPA would be. And those A through G requirements that Ms. Uh, Cormier is going to speak a little bit more uh, in detail about will be required. You'll have to pass those classes with C's or better. And right now, stay tuned because the SAT and the ACT, if you've heard anything in the news, there's a lot more going on right now with what that 
could possibly end up being. So with you guys being current freshmen, that may change coming down the road. So stay tuned for that requirement. If you're thinking of attending the University of California, keep in mind that that is one university with 10 different campuses. Uh, UCLA, UC Irvine, Berkeley, and Riverside are an example of just a few in the UC system. For the UC system, you have to have a minimum GPA of 3.0. You can be higher, but not less. Uh, 3.0 uh, gives you admission to the system, but not the campus of your choice. Um, A through Gs must be completed with a C or better. And once again, stay tuned for those SAT and ACT requirements, because that is all up in the air a bit. Um, in the private sector, um, some of the campuses in California that are private schools would be Chapman University, which is just down the street in Orange, very close to us, um, Harvard, University of Laverne, or Biola. Um, those are just examples. Um, there's 158 campuses in California, private universities in California. And just keep in mind, when it comes to a private university, they got, they're got they not part of that state system, so they get to make their own rules. So it's most important right now that you are researching that specific campus for their specific requirements. So the reason why we presented this today is just to, again, kind of plant that seed, get you thinking about what you're planning on doing after high school, so that as you are selecting these classes for 10th grade, you're making the choices that suits you best. Good morning, freshmen. Uh, my name is Mrs. Cormier, and I share the end of the alphabet with Mrs. Jansen. Today, I'm going to be speaking a little bit more about the A to G requirements for applying to a four-year college. So the A to G requirements were developed between the Cal State system and the UC system, and each letter represents um, an area of academic study that you need to complete with a grade of C or better in order to be eligible to apply to these colleges. A to G requirements will also prepare you for entrance requirements for private schools. So the A category stands for the history social science. You're required to take two years. So most Brayland students will satisfy that with either world history and AP European history, and then their US history or AP US history. Please remember that you must have a C or better both semesters or you will not be eligible to apply to a four-year college. If you get less than a C, you are able to take summer school in order to remake the grade and thus become eligible for a four-year college. The B category is English. You need to take four years. C category is your first kind of tricky category. It's math. And you'll see that we have on our chart three years and a little star. The star means that three years is your minimum requirement, but if you plan on applying to a highly competitive school such as UCLA or UC Berkeley or Stanford, you should be taking more than the minimum requirement. So although it says three, you should be considering four. The D category is laboratory science, and this is science that has a, la a hands-on laboratory component to it. Again, you're going to see there's a star, two years minimum, three years um, suggested if you're looking at highly competitive schools. Luckily, Brea Olinda requires three years of laboratory science in order to graduate, so we've already prepared you for those requirements. The E requirement is foreign language. Their minimum requirement is two years. Again, there's a star. If you're applying to a highly competitive school, you should be considering three or four years. And it must be in the same category of language. So if you begin by taking Spanish one and you decide you would like to switch to French, you need to start that requirement over again. The F category is your visual and performing arts. You only need one year and it needs to be consecutive semesters and anything from dance to um, wind ensemble um, to any of our wonderful art classes will meet this requirement. The last category is the G category and that is the college prep elective. Um, this is the easiest one because anything extra in any of those categories falls into that bucket. Um, again, please remember C or better. And we are, again, unsure how the SAT or ACT are going to play out in the future, so please stand by um, while they sort that out. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sommer. 
and that was just our title, AG to G okay, requirements. And we do have these resources. We do talk about the A to Gs all the time um, with your classes, but we know it's hard to remember everything. So these copies of um, our A to G requirements plus the list of classes that Brea Olinda um, offers and what category they satisfy are in your Google Classroom. So that way you don't have to memorize it. You'll have this at your fingertips for reference. Next slide, Mr. Stomar. All right, thank you. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so it's my turn now. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I have quite a bit to cover. I'm gonna go slow. Um, if for some reason we bleed past the uh, time for second period, I hope you stay into break with us a little bit. I hopefully won't go too far into your break at all, and hopefully not at all, but it's a little different than it was last year, and it's a little different for everybody in the school this year. So um, here we go. So <clears throat> you may have seen, or you had older siblings who had a sheet that kind of looked like this. And this was actually the card that they used and went around with to get teacher signatures and things like that. We've changed it this year, and it's more of a worksheet now. Uh, Mrs. Kessel went over this with you in your PE classes yesterday. Um, but it kind of spells out what a plan would be for you for the next three years, your sophomore, junior, and senior year. Again, it is a worksheet, but you will use this sheet and refer to the course codes on the back of the sheet um, as you go through the uh, course selection process. So um, we will put this, I think it's already actually in your Google Classroom for counseling, and the documents that Mrs. Um, Cormier referred to uh, will be put in there as well today. Um, and you will get everything in your Google's classroom today. So make sure you check your counseling Google classroom. All the course selection information and materials will be in there by the end of the day today. Okay, next slide. So instead of filling out a form that looks like the worksheet, we're going to have you do a course selection form uh, through Google. Okay, um, your deadline to have this form and your Aries academic plan, which we'll talk about later, will be Friday, February 19th, so a week from this Friday. So you're gonna go through the Google form and take care of, and it's pretty, it's really easy to do, um, but we hope you sit down with your parents as you go through and pick your courses. Um, the minimum of six classes are gonna be required. A seventh class may be chosen if you're in a special program, but there's no guarantee that your request will be accommodated. But if you're in a special program, chances are we're gonna be able to give you the seven. Uh, any course that has a check mark on it, um, there will be a teacher recommendation tied to it, but you will not need a teacher recommendation this year to go ahead and sign up for that course. So if there's an honors or an AP course that you're interested in taking next year as a sophomore, you sign up for it. You don't have to have any um, approval by uh, your current teacher to sign up for those courses. It's a little different. The teachers are gonna give us uh, their recommendations based on who signs up for those honors and AP courses. And then we will sit down with you uh, when we meet with you in your biology classes in a couple weeks. And we'll talk about if you were recommended or not and what you need to do to uh, get around that if that's something you're interested in doing as a family. Um, also, something new is the honors and advanced placement commitment form. If you do sign up for an honors or an AP class, we're going to have you and your parents complete an honors AP uh, commitment form that needs to be signed. And that explains what the commitment is to be in an honors or AP course at Braille in the high school. So going down the Google form briefly, everyone has to pick either world history, or AP European history next year. You will click on the Google form. If you do pick the AP European history, remember you're gonna have to do uh, an honors AP commitment form as well. Uh, next section is, do I have, let's see, I went the wrong way with my little wheel. Hang tight, guys. Oh, my wheel is acting up. Here we go. Cool. English. So, um, Lit 2 or Honors Lit 2. Again, if you do the honors, you're going to have to do the, the, the commitment form. You only have to do the commitment form once, so you don't do it for every time you sign up for uh, multiple honors or AP courses. Just do one. It counts for all your honors or AP courses. But if you do do more than one, just the, for, the commitment form once. Uh, mathematics. Notice that things are a little different. The check mark is for Algebra 2 and beyond. So if you're in um, Algebra 1, um, you will be going to Geometry next year. So you'll pick Geometry. Um, if you are in Algebra 1A this year, you'll go to Algebra 1B. Uh, any other courses 
that you may be going to, the teacher may want to give us input on proper placement after you've signed up, and we will talk to you about those recommendations when we meet with you in a couple of weeks. Lab science. Everyone's either going to chemistry or honors chemistry next year. Again, same as before. If it's honors, you will do a commitment form. Um, now, here's what the commitment form looks like. We will have that as an assignment in your Google Classroom. If it doesn't apply to you, you don't have to do the assignment. But we want to make sure that those who do sign up for an honors or AP class do the assignment, which is to print the form or download the form, fill it out, and then upload it back to your Google Classroom assignment, OK? Moving on, world language. Lots to choose from here. You may not be in a world language this year and you want to take one next year, or you're moving on to the next level, the second level, or the third, or potentially the fourth. Visual Performing Arts or College Prep Elective. This is the F or G on the A through G. Um, you will put your answer uh, in the Google form. Um, you'll write it in, and then we want alternates and backups. We want you to rank your first, second, and third alternate. Um, in years past, we had you do your courses in course requests in ARIES, and we're not doing that this year. And on that platform, there was the ability to put in an alternate. There is no ability to put in an alternate in your academic plan, which we're going to cover shortly. So we want you to put your alternates here, and we want you to rank them so we know which ones are more important to you in case you don't get your first choice or your second choice. So visual performing arts or college prep elective in line one. And then after that, three alternates, please rank them. PE. So you have to do two, two years of PE to graduate. So you're either going to PE Life Fitness 2 next year. You have the option of going to weight training as a PE class as well. Uh, dance one, if you are in dance, higher levels as a freshman, dance two, three or dance production, you'll still click dance, um, but you will write down below um, what you are planning to try out for. Um, and then when the auditions happen, they'll notify us and we will make the adjustment in your schedule. So you'll pick one of those four there uh, and go from there. Now, if you are going to play a sport next year, then we're going to want you to write the sport down in that answer because if you're returning to a sport, if you're playing a sport for the first time, do not write a sport. You can write a sport down, but we're not going to put you in that sport. We only want those students who are returning from a sport. Uh, and we will talk to you again when we meet with you in two weeks to clarify all that. And we'll get it all straightened out for you. That's why we meet with you one on one in two weeks. OK. And again, this presentation will be provided to you to go over it so you can kind of go over slow and you can kind of read through the fine print. OK. So we want you to prefer, refer rather to your worksheet. And I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen briefly so I can get the Aries academic plan up to show you what it looks like. So hang tight for a second. Okay, so we should be ready to go. So let, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your Aries and you're going to go to classes and then you are going to click on academic plan. And I'll go back after this and show you the slide just to make sure. But there is a place and your screen is going to look pretty close to what my screen looks like. And um, it's called the Aries academic plan. And for a current freshman, you're going to see some colors. Any course that's green means that you've already passed that course. So if you look at a ninth grader here, for semester, this student has already passed Lit 1, Algebra 1, Biology, Health, Vita 1, and PE. Okay. Um, and then the orange are what you're currently taking, and the blue classes are what you plan on taking. And those are the ones that will be populated, the blue ones, when you go to do your plan. So once you see this screen, we're going to have you go up here to where it says grade, add course set by grade, okay? And I'll send a step-by-step -step sheet in your Google Classroom as well to take you through this so you can watch this video over or you can follow the steps. 
So when you click on grade, you're going to see 10 and 11 and 12. And there are three different options for each grade. So I'm going to click on this. Here's the drop down. So this is where you need to have conversations with your parents too, because they, you guys all need to be on the same page on what you're thinking about doing post high school. So the first one is I'm going to graduate from high school and go to community college. So you're going to take the minimum classes necessary. The second one, very similar actually to the one above, and that's for CSUs. So this is like, you're not going to be in any honors or AP courses, but you're going to be in the courses that are UC approved that are A through G. Uh, a non-competitive Cal State school, this would be the plan you'd want to go on. And then this packet here is going to have like all of your honors and AP courses in, and it'll lay them out for your sophomore, junior, and senior year. So depending on what you want to do um, after high school, you'll pick one of these. Now you can also uh, adjust your courses for next year and the next two years just by moving some things around. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to pick the middle one for this young person here. So we're going to go uh, CSU public college, and I'm going to do the same thing for all three, because that's my plan. And so I pick the middle, and then I'm going to hit apply selection. And I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to put the core courses in, because this is what happens. The core courses are populated. So you can see world history, litcom 2, geometry, chemistry. There's a PE in there as well. And then you're going to see the junior and the senior year courses that are going to go in there, the core courses. Usually it's four to five courses. 10th grade, it's five because of the PE. Now, let's say this student is not, let's say this student, this current student is gonna to go to BIDA two. So how do they put BIDA two in there? Well, it's not in this section here. You're gonna go over to courses here and you can type the name in or you can refer to the course code on the back of your card. And so the back of your card for BIDA two is 9547. So I click on here and I type in 9547 and I have bit of two. And then you click on bit of two and you say add to plan. And then you go to grade level and you want this for 10th grade. And term is year long and then you place the course. And then you should see bit of two will pop in. Now, if you want, you can go put in bit of three and bit of four. Um, those court, if you know the codes, if you don't know the codes or if you don't have the code, I can help you. Our counselor can help you in two weeks, or we can just wait until a, a, a later date when you're sitting down with your counselor and we can review your plan. But we want to make sure 10th grade is complete. So there's bit of two. We've got that in. So now we got one, two, three, four, five, six. This student's schedule is complete. Now let's say, hey, you know what? I really enjoyed science. I should have taken honors bio last year, this year. I didn't, but I really want to be an honors chem next year. Then you would come up here, you could put in honors chem. So you go here, you click on this, you can type in the code for honors chem. It would be uh, 6031, there's honors chem. You hit add to plan, you say for grade 10, it's gonna be a year long course, you place the course, and now you have two chemistry courses, right? Well, you, don't, you said you wanna take honors chem, so now you can come up here and you can delete chemistry and now you have honors chem in there. So you can really play and adjust this. So what we want you to do is work with this and your parents on adjusting your academic plan um, and get it to where you think it needs to be. And then you'll meet with the counselors and, and we'll talk to you about it. So once you have all that dialed in, you think, okay, I'm happy with my sophomore year. I've got some ideas of my junior and my senior year. Um, I wanna show you one more thing over here. Now you can click on these as well. Here's CSU requirements. You can see what courses are going to fulfill certain requirements in the CSU or the UC. And again, we'll play with these. And I want you guys to play with them too. I want you to go click on them and, and see how things work. And then high schools, the high school view is what we're looking at right now. Okay. So we have this view and we have our courses ready to go. Okay. This may throw you off because it looks like there's missing a semester of PE, but this is a year long course. It's just not going all the way across. We're going to adjust that soon so it will go all the way across so you know that you have PE if that's what you want to take for the whole year. Um, so now I've got my classes. So now what do I do next? On your screen, but not on my screen, you are going to hit the button submit my plan for counselor review. And when you submit your plan for counselor review, that means it's ready to go for the counselor to look at. And we will look at it with you when we meet with you in your biology class and go over it. And then 
it'll be pending approval of the counselor and we'll say, yep, we're good to go and we like that and, and we're solid. And we'll also talk about 11th and 12th grade. So there's gonna be time for us to talk about this in your biology or your honors biology class when we meet with you in a couple of weeks. Again, I'm gonna send you step-by-step -step directions on how to fill this out. Um, you can always email us too if you feel like you've gotten stuck on anything, um, but it's pretty, pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen briefly or actually see if I can get to my screen here. Yep, I think I can do this and hit present. And I think the bell rang. Don't leave me. Hang tight because I only got a couple more minutes and we're good, okay? So again, I want to go back to this part. You're going to log into your student portal. Don't do your parent portal for your academic plan. You've got to do your student portal. And then some of you have this fancy mode on uh, Aries. I don't know what it is exactly. I don't know why they have it, but make sure it's turned off. And you're going to click on classes and that takes you to your academic plan in the drop down menu and that would take you to the academic plan okay uh and now mrs mcdonald i believe you're up are you there mrs mcdonald i am i'm here no okay guys so keeping this in mind moving forward the best advice we can give you is schedule yourself for success so make sure you know your goals what is your where do you see yourself after high school um so that we can help you plan appropriately take into consideration your strengths and your weaknesses what are you good at what do you struggle with and make sure you find that balance and plan appropriately also take into consideration what are you going to be doing at Braille Linda High School? What are you planning on being involved in and how much time that's going to require? And in addition to that, take into consideration if you are going to be doing anything outside of Brea, club sports, church, scouts, things like that. Um, make sure you keep things in balance by balancing out the number of honors or AP classes you take. Um, talk with your current teachers of that subject area to help you out. Um, look at the resources to find how much time commitment that those classes are gonna require and use the balance sheets um, that are available online to look at what your same age peers have said about those classes in the past and make sure you can handle all that. So most importantly, keep everything in balance. Moving forward, um, again, like Mr. Stelmar said, if you sign up for a class with a check mark, um, the recommendations will be coming to us. You will just need to fill out that uh, honors and AP class commitment form um, and then make sure that and realize that if there's something that you're going to try out for or audition for, because that is a specifically the, that class requires a specific selection process, there's a possibility that you will not be able to see that when you're doing your academic plan. So, for example, if you're going to try out for dance production, you can sign up for dance one because that would be available on the plan. And then once we get the information from that particular advisor, coach, or um, uh, uh, you know, uh, leader of that group or teacher of that group, then we will have to change it internally on our end based on what that instructor tells us to do. Uh, real quick, here's the schedule uh, for meeting with your biology teacher or your honors bio teacher. We will be meeting with you the week of March 1st. Um, so please have your academic plan in Aries complete. Please have your Google form, course selection form complete um, by the time we meet with you in your class. We will be meeting with you obviously through Zoom uh, and we'll work with your teachers to make sure that's all set up and complete. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature in this. We will be online probably for another 10 to 15 minutes if you have questions. Otherwise, you can email us. We thank you for participating in our course selection assembly today. We hope you have a great day. And uh, if you have questions, again, use the Q&A. And thank you so much.